Glory to God. Hallelujah. Good morning. Are you awake or are you still sleepy? It's service time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we are here for our time of prayer as we dedicate this service to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Now, Ecclesiastes 7, 19 says, Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. So wisdom strengthens. Then in Ecclesiastes 9, 16 says, Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Hallelujah. Then Ecclesiastes 10, 10, it says, If Aaron be uh, blunt and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Hallelujah. And in James 1, verse number 5, we are told, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Hallelujah. So this morning, as you know, because uh, the president has announced that the, the, the lockdown has been eased, he has given permission for churches to meet, hallelujah, even though with conditions. So it's, I believe it's a moment where we require wisdom as a nation. Glory to God. And this morning, uh, we are going to pray for wisdom because the Bible says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So this morning, we are here to ask of wisdom. Hallelujah. We are here to ask for wisdom from God for various people and various groups in our nation. Glory to God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful, we are thankful this morning, we appreciate you, we honor you as our God. Father, thank you because you are the giver of wisdom. And Father, as a nation, we are in dire need of wisdom as a, as a citizenry, as a government, O oh Lord, even as the church of Jesus Christ. Father, we require and we are in need of your wisdom. Father, your word told us that wisdom is profitable to direct. So Father, we need your wisdom to guide us in various uh, decisions that we, should, uh, that we should make in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we pray for wisdom over our over our church leaders in Jesus name we pray for wisdom over the pastors oh Lord even as the churches resume oh God we ask for your wisdom to lead them to guide them to direct them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth father we ask for wisdom upon the Kenyans population in Jesus mighty name hallelujah even as people plan to travel oh God to the rural areas oh God we ask for wisdom to direct wisdom oh God on how to carry ourselves as a population, oh God, so that my Father, we are not, oh Lord, uh, putting ourselves and putting others in danger of this pandemic in the name of Jesus Christ. So I pray for your wisdom to rest upon us as a nation in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that, Father, even the government, you will continue to guide them and lead them and let your wisdom also continue to rest upon them in the name of Jesus and especially the issue O oh Lord, as even the, the, the directive, O oh God, concerning education and reopening of schools, O oh God, has come. Lord, we ask for wisdom upon the parents, O oh Lord. We ask for wisdom upon, upon the students. We ask for wisdom upon the ministry of education in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory because, Lord, we know when we ask of you, you give us, O oh Lord, wisdom in the name of Jesus. And this morning, we specifically inquire of you and require of you and ask of you that Father you will grant us wisdom to direct us as a nation to direct us O oh Lord even as the church of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father thank you for this service in the name of Jesus. I pray that your wisdom will reign supreme throughout this service in the name of Jesus that your wisdom will take control of our praise and worship that your wisdom will take control O oh God even in 
in our time of giving uh, that your wisdom father we rest upon oh God the minister of the word oh God in the name of Jesus Christ and at the end of the day Lord we will be celebrating because your wisdom has led us and guided us victoriously and successfully in the mighty name of Jesus we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus name Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Now it's time for praise and worship. Hallelujah. And as we, as we say, it's not a documentary. So we expect and we request that you join us. Glory to God. Prepare yourself. Hallelujah. Are you ready to dance? Glory to God. Amen. It's time for praise and worship. Praise and worship. Welcome. Glory to God. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. you the glory we lift our hands to give you the praise and we will praise you for the rest of our days yes we will praise you for the rest of our days we lift our hands
every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our on keeping us my king and my father there is no one like you there is nothing Jesus besides you just open your mouth thank God for the gift of life that he's given you thank him for 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 strength that he's given you thank him for everything that he's doing in your life right now oh God my Lord and my God how good you are how worthy you are Jesus how marvelous how wonderful oh God all worship and honor and glory belongs to you God we sing that you're holy we say God that you're mighty we say God that you're faithful we say God that you're wonderful we say God that you're awesome my God and my Lord Jesus our Father God even in this time oh Lord we pray that King of glory God we will see your goodness oh Father my God and my Father we will not complain of the situations around us we will not complain King of glory God of the fears and, and the luck that is that is in the in, in our country right now my Lord and my God that Jesus we will see that you're faithful to us oh God that we will see you are good to us my Father how worthy you are Lord thank you Jesus thank you God we worship you oh God we adore you, my God. How worthy you are, Jesus. Oh. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see.
Fantastic. Felista and the worship team, thank you so much for leading us in that session of praise and worship. It is always a blessing to just go before the Lord in praise and in worship. It is something you and I need to learn to treasure, to just spend time and to get lost in his presence. There's such a reassurance and an inner strength that we are able to glean when we spend time in the presence of the Lord. I want us to get ready to give this morning, as we always do, as we partake of the worship service at Destiny Chapel. I want to read something for us today as we prepare to give. This is in the book of Luke chapter 21. This is Jesus in the temple looking at people as they give. It says, and Jesus looked up. He saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. It says in verse 3, truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on. 
two kinds of people in this scripture rich people and the poor widow and one of the things i love about this scripture you know sometimes we think it's only the rich people who are meant to give but we see a poor person how can a poor person not give a rich person and that's exactly what this scripture is talking to us about it tells me that god looks at our giving very differently in fact jesus looked up he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury jesus looks at our giving god looks at our giving and god looks at our giving from a very different perspective from that which we look at as humans he looks at the heart he looks at the intentions you have rich people who gave a lot and you have a poor widow who gave very little but the little she gave was a lot to her and she gave it out of a pure heart sometimes we give to show off sometimes we give for reasons that may not be clean reasons so to speak but you know what we need to give out of a pure heart it's not the amount it's the condition of the heart and so this morning i want to encourage you and i as we give may we give cheerfully may we give what we have decided in our hearts to give may we give out of a pure heart and why do we give because when we give like i told you two weeks ago we are protecting our hearts reminding ourselves that god is our source god is our provider sometimes in seasons like this the tendency is to hold on because we live in uncertain times and things are not going the way they usually go but it's in seasons like this that we give even more in faith because we are telling god my trust is not in my job my faith is not in my business my faith is not in my bank account my faith is in you because you are my provider let's pray heavenly father i want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to give this morning we give out of a pure heart what we have decided in our hearts to give i pray for every giver at destiny the lord you will continue to bless them to bless the work of their hands to bless their businesses i pray for those who may be looking for employment because they've lost employment the lord you are opening up doors for them those my father who are thinking of getting into business give them business ideas those who've recently started businesses my father pray that lord you will bless their businesses that lord we will thrive in everything that we do receive our gifts today I pray that Lord they will be used for the benefit of your body and I pray my father that even as we give the blessing of God will continue to flow in our lives. We thank you Lord, we honor you. We give you praise in Jesus name. We pray and everybody said amen. Remember once again the pay bill number is on your screen. Give and give cheerfully and thank you for your consistent giving throughout the weeks. It's been amazing. May the name of the Lord be praised. Well, are you ready for the word this morning? I am so ready for the word this morning. Morning. last week our bishop kicked off a series talking about the three hebrew boys they are four not three actually they are four the three hebrew boys are the ones who went into the fiery furnace but daniel is also part of this crew and pastor chola was talking to us about their experience and lessons we can learn from what they went through they stood their ground and they would not budge and i am so excited can't wait to hear what he's going to share with us this week so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls of all ages put your hands together help me welcome the one the only our bishop joel chola to come and pick up from where he left off last week pastor chola karibu sana hallelujah praise the name of jesus thank you for just uh, joining us uh, this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning, uh, July the 12th, to be a part of our online service. I want to take a few moments uh, this morning and just, uh, first of all, uh, uh, let you know a uh, direction that I feel the Lord is uh, leading us, especially as a congregation. Uh, this is now, I'm speaking really to the church family at Desnu Chapel. Uh, I know that uh, it's been quite an eventful week uh, where the, the nation has opened up. Uh, there's a lot that's going on, you know, churches have been given uh, opportunity to now begin to have services. Uh, if you've been following uh, the news and uh, the direction the churches have been given, is that we, we are actually allowed to have uh, a congregational meeting with about 100 people uh, between the ages of 13 and 58. Praise the Lord, I just made it through. <laughs> you know, uh, and so we, 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 we know that that's the general direction that uh, the, 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 the nation has, 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 has taken. 
But we sense something different here at Destiny Chapel. Uh, I just, I just want to give you a, a, a very quick overview of a passage of scripture that I preached from uh, when we began. You know, please note that this has been, we started this in March. March, April, May, June. Now we're in July. It's been five months uh, since we locked down, since the, the pandemic really began to make its entry, entry into Kenya. And I'm sure you, say, you know in, in reality that even though the nation has opened up, uh, the pandemic is still with us. It has not been sorted out. It's not been dealt with. We don't have a vaccine yet. We don't have a cure for this uh, disease. And so as much as the country has allowed meetings and congregational meetings, we at Destiny Chapel are taking a different direction. We want to really take some more time and wait upon the Lord until we all have peace. Now, we have spoken to a lot of people in our leadership. Uh, we've, we've sent out questionnaires uh, to parents and families, and we've compiled uh, all these answers. And we, the general feeling and the general sense, and I totally agree as a direction from the Lord, is that we need to wait a little bit more. We're just going to wait, observe what's happening globally, observe what's happening in the nation, and then we shall take our stand and begin again to meet as a congregation. And so this is, what we're, this is where the anchor of what we're doing is, comes from. It comes from the book of, uh, I almost said the book of Noah. <laughs> but the story of Noah in Genesis chapter 8, the scripture says, you can check this carefully, Ge Genesis chapter 8 says that after, after two and a half months, after the, the ark had settled, after the flood waters had subsided, the scripture says Noah took another 40 days, after another 40 days, is when Noah opened the window and, uh, and made a boat. Okay, then he released a raven. And you know the story, the raven flew, couldn't find anywhere to land and came back to him. Then after seven days, he sent a dove, which went and came back to him. Then after that, he sent it, he waited another seven days, it went. The scripture said it, it flew around, could not find dry ground, and it came back to him. Then the third time after he sent it, it's when there was a release because the dove never came back. But then after that, it says Noah still waited another seven days before finally he opened the door of the ark and, and let the fam or his family out and the animals out. In fact, listen to what the scripture says. It says uh, in, in, in uh, uh, Genesis 8, it says, uh, Genesis 8, 13, it says, Now Noah was 601 years old on the first day of the new year, Ten and a half months after the flood began. Then it says, the flood waters had almost dried up from the earth. Noah lifted the covering of the boat and saw the surface of the ground was dry. So, flood waters had dried up. The ground looked dry. But then it says, two more months went by before the earth was completely dry. Then God told Noah... Leave the boat, you and your family, release all the animals, release all the birds, and begin to multiply. This is our anchor scripture, even as we make a decision as, as a local body that we're going to wait until the time is right. And this is a direction I want to share with you. We are going to take the next several weeks to observe, to send out the dove, to send out the raven, to just check out the land until we are sure. Why am I doing this? It's because our church is predominantly made up of families, very young parents, very young parents with very young children, and we do not want to have a situation where we expose ourselves to any danger. We are using a lot of wisdom. We are full of faith. Oh my God. We are believing and we are trusting that this enemy that is invisible will be defeated and defeated very soon. But until the time we have that release, we're going to ask you to continue joining us online. We're going to ask you to participate in all our platforms. We have prayer going on every day. We have uh, daily devotions that the pastoral team is sharing every morning. And then we have our, our celebration service every Sunday online. We have our children's uh, service that, that's going to be airing right after this service so that we as parents can participate with our children and see them grow in the Lord. And on that note, I also would like to really uh, appreciate uh, the congregation that the Lord has given us here at Destiny. Many of you have hung in there, remained faithful. I want to commend you for all of your giving, of your tithes, of your offerings, the breadbasket fund. This has been continuing at a very steady pace, and I know 
know some of us have been affected with losses of jobs. We are trusting that your job will be restored and you will even give more than you've given to the kingdom than you've ever done before. So we want to encourage you and say how much we love you and how much we appreciate the body of Christ here at Destiny Chapel. Our pastors are well cared for. Our staff is well cared for. This online service is, is, is I'm telling you, amazing. I want to appreciate our, our online crew uh, that has been working tirelessly, being led by Paul, who's our head of, uh, uh, of logistics and media. Then we have Nico. He's behind the camera right now, smiling. <laughs> uh, thank you, Josephine, for letting Nico come on and just helping us. Uh, we also want to appreciate uh, Dan, who's tirelessly, I mean, he's here every week, every day, getting everything ready. If you can just go behind the camera and see behind the scenes what's going on. There are mattresses behind me, mattresses on the side to help with the echo. I know they're looking at me like, Pastor, you can't tell people that. Yes, I am. But it's really because I am full of gratitude. We are full of gratitude as a church. And we can't forget uh, uh, Daryl, who works Day and night, all this editing and putting together of this service involves a team, DJ Steam. I mean, these guys, every day I come, they're working. And I ask them, how long does it take you to do this? Pastor Donna, you know, with all the worship and the worship team. And we really appreciate the labor of love. And I want you to know that your labor is not in vain. The Bible says that in due season, you will reap a harvest if you faint not. So, as, a, as the pastor of the church, I just want to appreciate all the church members, the givers, all the guys behind the scenes, the worship team, our staff, our pastoral teams. I mean, everyone is working overtime to ensure that we have an almost perfect online service. And I'm sure as a congregation, you've been appreciating and seeing the changes and the, and the good things that are happening. I also want to appreciate Pastor James, who brought us a team from, from Family Media, and they brought all their cameras here, and they taught us what to do and showed us some of the tips. And so we really thank the Lord. And so I just want you not to grow weary. We're going to hang in there for a few more weeks. I really feel that the Lord is telling us, wait until I tell you to go. So please be in prayer. Please wait upon the Lord with us until the time is right. God bless you. And may you continue to give with all of your heart. And if you've lost your job, I'm trusting that you will get a better one. I know we've received so many phone calls. Some people have lost their jobs. We're trusting that you'll get a better job or God will give you a business idea that will take you to the next level. So thank you, and the Lord bless you. Now, let me go to my message. Hallelujah. I know you've been wondering, when is he going to start preaching? Well, last Sunday, we began a message, a series of messages that I've been, I'm speaking to the church concerning steps that you and I must endure as we go through the furnace of affliction. In fact, I kept thinking in my mind the entire week, as I was listening to news and seeing what's happening, things are about to get hotter. I may sound like I don't have faith, but believe you me, my faith is top on the list. I'm right up there. But I know that things are about to get hotter, and that's why God has given me this message for you. Last week, I laid a foundation concerning these three Hebrew boys from the book of Daniel that were set up really to compromise their faith, but they did not. In the middle of a very hot furnace, they were able to stand their ground for what they believed in. And this is what you and I are coming to the place of standing. We have to stand for what we believe. We cannot give up. We cannot doubt for a moment. We must trust that God is in control. The book of Daniel chapter 3 records this incident where these three Hebrew boys who had been taken away from their home, taken away from what they used to know, taken away from their normal way of life, and now they were being set before a heathen king by the name of King Nebuchadnezzar. And this heathen king had actually made them rulers with him, made them governors in his domain. And then at some point, he decided to create an idol. Now remember, in the book of Exodus, when, when, when the children of Israel were given the Ten Commandments, the first commandment was, you shall have no other gods before me, because I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, and I will punish the iniquities of their fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, and I will bless those who love me up to a thousand generations. And so these young men had been taught that word over and over again while they were in Israel. Now that they are slaves, their king, their earthly king, decides that he's going to create an object of worship. 
And he says in Daniel chapter 3, that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, and they said to him, man, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown in the blazing furnace, it's like they were saying, so be it. So be it. The God that we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your hand. But even if he does not, we, will not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. The scripture says in verse 22 of Daniel 3 that the king's command was so urgent and the fire so hot that the flames of the, of the fire killed the soldiers that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the flames. Then it says... These men, the three men that were firmly tied up, they were thrown into the, in the blazing furnace. Then something very interesting happened while they were in the furnace. The Bible says the king Nebuchadnezzar then leaped to his feet in, a, in, a, in, in, in amazement. And he asked his advisors, hey, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. Then he said, look, I see four men walking in the fire, unbound, unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. This is my message today. The key scripture is Genesis 3, I mean, uh, Daniel 3, 25. It says, look, I see three men, I see four men, sorry, walking. And he says, unbound, unharmed. And the fourth one looks like the son of, like the sons of a god. Last week, let me just recap last week very quickly. We looked at, Several things that this young man faced. First of all, they had been removed from their home. They were away from their known way of life. They were, they were away from their leaders, from their scribes, the, the Pharisees and, and, people, and leaders of the law that used to teach them the law. And now they are faced with a scenario here where they no longer can hear that consistently, but they have to draw something from deep within them, that which had been deposited in them while they were still young. So last week, I remember I challenged us as parents that we should train up our children the way that you should, they should go so that when they are old, even if their environment changes, they will still have something inside of them that anchors them in the truth of the word of God. The next thing that happened, these guys had actually been indoctrinated with new knowledge in Babylon, just like you and I are facing today. You know, we are being, we are being bombarded with a lot of information, especially now that we are at home and we have the opportunity to watch TV, you know, be on the internet. There's so much knowledge. There's an increase in knowledge. But these young men, even in the midst of all this, were still able to choose the knowledge of the truth of the word of God. Then remember last week, I told you that their names were changed. Their diet was changed. Basically, Nebuchadnezzar was trying to change their, their character and the way that they believe in God, but they refused to bow. Basically, on the outside, they had new names. On the outside, they were eating different kind of food. On the outside, they lived away from home, but on the inside, where God lives, on the inside, they still believed in the living God. So basically, the only option now Nebuchadnezzar had was to persecute their faith. Last week we talked about step one, which is a persecution of your faith. The enemy wants to target your faith. The enemy wants to target your belief system. The enemy is always prowling around looking for one that he may devour. And this is the situation these three young men find themselves in. The enemy is coming against their faith, coming against their stand of who they believe in, coming against the savior that they believe in, coming against their God. And this is what we are seeing in this season when the furnace is getting hotter and hotter. I don't know about you, maybe there are times you've looked back at your life and thought, man, you know, I've stood so long on the truth. You know, you're tempted to give up. You're tempted to throw in the towel. You know, I've come by to tell you, God wants you to continue standing. Do not bend. Do not bow because God has a plan even in the midst of the furnace. Okay, the next thing that I want to say to you, and this is, this is part two. This is step two of persecution. In fact, as I was preparing my message this week, I realized that that, that subject of persecution is so big. In fact, the Bible says that the, the king's anger was enraged against this man. And he said that the, the flames be heated seven times hot. I want you to listen to me carefully. Not only was the flame hot, 
But this time, just because of these three boys, it was made seven times hotter. And this week, as I was meditating on the Word of God, I felt like we're entering a season where things are going to heat up a little bit more. The question is, will you stand? The question is, will I stand? In fact, I said last week, the only thing in the world that is more powerful than fear is faith. If we stand by faith, in whom we have believed in, I can, let, I can tell you confidently that fear will be driven away from your presence. Fear will be driven away from where you stand. So this morning, my second step is more persecution. <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering, Pastor, where are you going with this message? My second step, the first step is persecution. I shared that last week. The second step is more persecution. More persecution. The scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that anyone who is going to, who, listen, listen to me, 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 says anyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will face persecution. In fact, he goes on to say, dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Paul is saying to Timothy, do not be surprised or at the fiery ordeal that has come to us right now to test us as if it is something strange. This is not a strange occurrence. I can, I can tell you without fear of contradiction that God is not sitting up in heaven surprised that there's COVID-19. God is not sitting up in heaven surprised that the church is no longer able to meet in the way we used to. God is not sitting in heaven surprised that the, the entire globe is fighting to find a solution for a disease called COVID-19. God is firmly in control. God knows the ordeal that you and I are facing. God knows the kind of affliction that the entire globe is going through, but he is letting it continue for your sake and for my sake. I believe that every time you face a fiery furnace, God is fashioning you. God is causing there to be more godliness. In this season of time, we are challenged to give more. In this season of time, we are challenged to trust God in this season of time, we are being challenged not to give up and to trust and to obey every single word. In this season of time, I'm sure you are, you're spending much time in prayer. You're spending much time in the word. So the fiery furnace is there. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar used the furnace to try and, 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 and persecute their faith. But God is using this season of persecution to sharpen your faith. That is why I'm telling you more persecution in this season is coming so that your faith can be sharper, so that your expectation and your trust in God can grow even more. Can I tell you something? There will be criticism, there will be intimidation, there will be temptations that will come your way. In fact, there will be hatred against your faith. But God wants you to know that you are right where he desires to, you to be. And please do not move an inch from where you're standing. Do you know what God told Jeremiah? In Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 5, listen to this scripture. It says... If you have raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in, in safe country, how will you manage in the thickets of Jordan? What was God telling Jeremiah? He was basically saying, if you think it's bad right now, just stick with me and you realize that things are about to get a whole lot worse. When you're in the furnace, I want you to remember that when the heat is turned on, God is at the point where he wants to purify your faith. The enemy wants to persecute your faith, but God wants to purify your faith. So even as Nebuchadnezzar cranked up the heat and said, make it seven times hotter, what he did know is that their faith was about to shine even brighter. I want you to listen carefully. Shadrach, Meshach, and, Bed and Abednego had already proved themselves as people who trusted the Lord. They refused to eat the king's meat. They refused to take the king's wine. And you remember the story. They were found to be ten times wiser. So up until this point, they were already living a life that was already shining. Everybody knew who they believed in. They had already been tested. But then why did they have to go through this step? It's so that their faith 
can now be outstanding. So I want to let you know, in the, on the outside, things will get worse. On the outside, we're going to face even more trouble in the coming days. But on the inside, our faith will begin to glow. Hallelujah. Our stand in God will begin to stand out even more. I believe that God wants you and I to stand out in this season. Hallelujah. God wants the world to know that there is a church that is alive. That's why we're going to continue having our services. That's why we're going to continue preaching the word of God through the internet. Why? Because God is refining our faith just like he, just like fire purifies silver and gold. Your faith and my faith are being purified. So step one, as you go through the season of affliction, this step cannot be avoided. You will go through persecution. The enemy will want to target your faith. But step two, more persecution. If you've been running with footmen, get ready. It's, it's time to run with horses. The fire is about to increase seven times hotter. Step three, I love this step. This is my message this morning. It's the step of preservation. Listen to what the scripture says. I'm going to read this scripture again from the book of Daniel. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 3, after they threw the three men in the furnace, the king said, look, I see four men walking around the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth one looks like the Son of God. I want to let you know that instead of these boys dying in the flames, the Bible says they were loosed. Listen, it says they were unbound. They were unharmed. In fact, they were loosed and began walking around. I want you to, I want to, I want you to think for a moment that Nebuchadnezzar and his men had bound these men, tied them with ropes, and then flung them into the fire. But as soon as they got into the fire, their bounds were loosed and they began to walk around. Nebuchadnezzar could not believe his eyes. And so he commands them to come out, which they do totally unharmed by the violence of the flame, of the flames. In fact, I want you to notice something very interesting. Jesus, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar saw someone else in the fire who was a fourth man. So when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the flame, they were not alone. They were not alone. The flame got hotter, but they were not alone. They were preserved. Let me make this statement. They were preserved by an ever-present God. Hallelujah. The God that they believed in, the God that they spoke about, came into the fire with them. And Nebuchadnezzar was astonished when he saw that there was a fourth man in the fiery furnace. I want to let you know, here's the lesson that you must understand. The Bible says that God... God will be with you wherever you go. He's an ever-present God. He's an ever-faithful God. In fact, he told the children of Israel in the book of Isaiah, when you pass through the waters, I will be there. When you pass through the rivers, I will be there. When you walk through the fire... When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. That's my message this morning. That even in this season, when things are getting heated up, when the temperatures are rising, I want to let you know that there's an ever-present God who is with us. He says, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, and I, and, and I will not leave you, and I will not forsake you. In fact, the scripture says in Matthew, 28 verse 20 the scripture says go and make disciples and, and, and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and says I will be with you always that's the message this morning that even as things get heated up even as the temperatures rise God promises that he will be with us in fact it says in Hebrews chapter 13 I will never leave you I will never forsake you I will never leave you I will never forsake you so in the midst of the fiery furnace in the midst of affliction I want to let you know that God is going to be present with us. Hallelujah. You will be free even in the fire. Do you know that the, the, the three Hebrew boys, their, 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 their bounds were untied and they were seen free walking. They were walking in. They were walking in and out. Hallelujah. So I want to let you know that in this season, God's desire is to free you and I from certain things that have been holding, holding us captive. Maybe we've doubted God before. Maybe we've never had a passion for giving. Maybe we've never
never had a passion to serve the Lord. But in this season, God is setting us free. God is, bu- God is burning away all the things that have been holding us back. Oh, hallelujah. I want to let you know that the, I was reading this week a, a story of an individual by the name of John Wesley. Now, this guy, John Wesley, together with some friends of his, they, 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 God, God just suddenly baptized them in fire and they began they began to preach with such a fire that the church at that time could not understand why they were preaching with such fire so typically what happened just like in the days of Jesus John Wesley who's the founder of the Methodist church was kicked out of the church and he was told you can no longer preach in our pulpits you can no longer speak in our pulpits because the kind of preaching you are preaching is not for pulpits I don't know what they used to preach on those days and so after kicking this guy out he together with another gentleman by the name of George Whitefield and his brother Charles, they began to preach in the open because they were kicked out of the church. They were thrown out into the open. They began to speak and guess what happened? I know, you got it right. All the people that were in the church hallelujah, went to join them in the fields and that was the beginning of revival meetings. That how te- that's how tent meetings began. That how, that's how crusades began. That's how people began getting saved on the out, in, the, in, the, in the open field. So, in the, so that the truth is, whenever you're feeling bound, whenever God, whenever you're feeling bound by something, God is losing you by increasing the temperature, raising the flames, raising the fire, and all these things that are holding you back are losing you so that you may go into your destiny. Hallelujah. So the first thing you want to notice is that God was present in the fire with them. Number two, they were free in the fire. Number three, I love this one, they were unharmed. They were fine while they were in the fire. Hallelujah. So you and I will be fine. Glory to God. Even as we go through this tough season, I want to let you know it doesn't matter how hot it gets you will be fine hallelujah it will not come near your dwelling place God promises that the pestilence will not come near your home he will spare you he will protect you he will be inside there with you hallelujah that's why you've got to dance that's why you've got to praise the Lord it doesn't matter what happens on the outside I want to make this statement God allowed them to go through the fire but he never allowed allowed the fire to go through them. Hallelujah. So in this season, yes, it's going to get hot, but God's desire is for us to go through the fire. God's desire is for us to be loosed while we're in the fire. God's desire is for us to dance around the fire with him, but the fire will not burn you. The fire will not go through you. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says all things work together for good. Romans 8, 28 says all things work together together for good for those who love him and are called according to the purposes of God. I know the flame can be frightening. I know the furnace as it gets hot, it can be frightening. But I want to let you know that God has brought it to you not for destruction, but for growth. This is a season where God wants you to grow from one degree to the next. Hallelujah. And here's the best part. The king Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar then said, I want those guys to be brought out. He said, I can see four of them. I thought we put three men inside. And so they get get in and they pull out the three Hebrew boys and they're out. And guess what? Three were put in, four were seen inside, and three came out. And I asked myself, verse 26, what happened to the fourth man? Why didn't the fourth man come out of the furnace? We know he was a son of God. We know that he was an angel or, or God's or Jesus, a pre-incarnate Jesus. The, 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 the revelation that I want you to get this morning is that the reason, mm, the reason why the fourth man didn't come out of the furnace is because he's still in there. Hallelujah. He's still in there. And so whenever you get into another furnace, he will, you will find him in there waiting for you. Hallelujah. I'm so excited this morning because it doesn't matter what the devil tries. He may move me from one place of challenge to another, but wherever I go, right where he takes me, God will be there waiting. Hallelujah. The fourth man is still in the furnace. Hallelujah. That's a message right there. The fourth man is still in the furnace. And so, I want you not to be afraid. Do not give up your faith. Do not give up your hope, because the Lord Jesus Christ is in the furnace. He will see you through the furnace, and he will wait for you in another furnace. It doesn't matter how it looks like. 
Jacob. He's going to be right in there waiting for you. And the final thing I want to say, and I close, is that they were preserved. Mm, I love this. They were preserved by an all-powerful God. This is the God who created the heavens. He created the earth. He created everything under the earth. Because the scripture says, after they came out of the fire, mm, the Nebuchadnezzar and his men went around and began to sniff them. They began to find out, mm, are these guys smelling of smoke? The Bible says, not a hair on them was singed. That means not a hair of them on them that was burnt. There was never soot on them. The one translation says, they did not even have the smell of smoke. I, can, I want you to imagine, you can imagine the Nebuchadnezzar's guys going around these three Hebrew boys and trying to smell them. Yani, kweli, are you even smelling of smoke? I know, I know, it's so interesting. You can't, you can't even pass somewhere where somebody has, has, maybe in a shop. Have you ever been in a shop and you're in the shop and you can smell, kuna mtu wapa mefuta fegi. I mean, smoke is so easy to smell. <laughs> Yet on these three guys who were inside the fire, they did not even have the smell of smoke. What does that mean? God is telling us something. God is telling us something. He's saying that even as you go through this season... Holy Ghost, even as you go through this season, you're going to come out on the other side without even a stench of smoke. The, as in everything that was targeting you, every, every loss of income, every loss of finances, every loss, all those things will not even be smelling on you when you get to the other side. Hallelujah. God is going to deliver you. And when God delivers, he delivers to the uttermost. That's what the Bible says. And so when God does something, he does it completely. He does it totally and he does it well. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work in us. So you and I who have found ourselves in this fiery furnace, I want us to remember that we serve an all powerful God. God who is able to keep us up in the times of affliction. God is able to bring us through the time of affliction. God who is able to be present with us in the time of affliction and he'll bring us through and when we get to the other side mm, hallelujah there will not even be a smell let me tell you something you're going to forget that it was even COVID-19 COVID-19 will be defeated COVID-19 will be dead and buried COVID-19 will be behind you even the impact of COVID-19 will not be felt on your life because God is present and God will see you through hallelujah the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter Chapter 1, verse 8 through 10. I'm going to close with this scripture. It says, For we would not, brethren, have you be ignorant, Paul is saying, of the trouble that he saw in Asia. They were pressed beyond measure, above strength, in so much that they despaired even of life. But, the Bible says, but... We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who is able to raise the dead who delivered us from so great a death and he will still deliver us even now. Paul is saying that we were in such a desperate place that we were, we were despairing even of life but then we remembered that we serve a God who has already raised us from the dead. That's why the three Hebrew boys were able to say, by the way, our God is able. But even if he does not, we will not bow. What are they trying to say? That even if we went into the fire and died, <clears throat> even if we went to the fire and died, please take note that our God is able to raise us from the dead. Hallelujah. So I want you to take courage this morning. You who's struggling, you who's gone through a season where you've lost your job, you've lost so many things in life and you're thinking, Lord, I'm at the point where I've despaired even of life itself. I want you to know that you serve a God who is able to raise you even from the dead. And because he's able to raise you from the dead, fear not that which you're going through now. Because even right now, whatever is happening, he will deliver you from it. But even if he does not, even if he does not, that's my conviction, that even if he does not, he is still God. He sits on the throne. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. The Bible says in Job chapter 5 verse 19, he shall deliver you six times. Six times he will deliver you. And yes, even seven times, the evil shall not touch you. I read the scripture this week and I thought, no wonder when they made the fire seven times hotter, 
God must just have been saying, you're just hitting the number of perfection. Seven is the number of perfection. So Nebuchadnezzar, without knowing, he was actually stepping right in the will of God by making the flame seven times hotter. Because in the book of Job, God said, six times I will deliver you out of trouble. Actually, seven times I will do it. So this morning, I want you to know that as you walk through this season of affliction, God will preserve you. God will sustain you. God will uphold you. In fact, he will make every crooked path straight for your sake and for my sake. So this morning, I want to pray a prayer for you. A prayer to encourage you that there is a fourth man in the fiery furnace. If you've put your trust in God, if you've put your trust in this God of the Hebrews, the God of heaven, the God of earth, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who raises the dead, I want to let you know that he is right there with you in the furnace of affliction. And he has promised to preserve you in this season. Father, I pray. For every single person on the sound of my voice, I pray, Lord, we know that this is such a difficult season. We know that this is a time of so much affliction. But Lord, even as you did it for the three Hebrew boys, we know that your agenda is for us to grow. And even above that, Lord, we know your agenda is so that we may shine forth, show forth your glory. And so, Lord, I pray for every person who's at the point of giving up, who's at the point of doubting and saying, where is the God that we have prayed in? I pray that, Lord, today you will open our eyes that we may see that even in this furnace, you are right there beside us. But even better, while we are dancing around the fire, you are setting us free from bondages that have been holding us captive for many, many years. Let your purposes prevail in this season as you preserve us through these flames of affliction. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Well, next week I'm going to be giving you my final point of, of, uh, of this season of affliction and what God has in store. I'm telling you, it's so exciting. And maybe you've been listening this morning and you don't even know about God. You're hearing him being mentioned for the first time. The Bible says that while we were still sinners, God sent his son to die on the cross. And his death on the cross really meant eternal life for you and I. Because we know this earthly life will come to an end. Yes, you will survive COVID-19. But somewhere down the road in your life, if the Lord tarries, you and I one day will have to go six feet under. And after that, the Bible says judgment. It is appointed for man to die once and then face judgment. So this is an opportunity while you're still alive for you to meet Jesus and make him Lord and Savior of your life. So if you've never heard about Christ, heard about Christ sorry, and you're saying, I want to make him Lord and Savior of my life, this is a moment that you don't want to miss. I want you to pray this very simple prayer. Because Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. And if any man hears my voice and opens their heart, I will come into him and I will live with him. We have had to make that choice, all of us who believe. And so maybe you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I don't know how to make Jesus Lord of my life. Just pray this simple prayer, which is acknowledging sin, acknowledging him as Lord, and inviting him into your life. So close your eyes. And let us pray. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for this season. I have heard your word and I want to open my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me by your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I will live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I want you to know that the Lord honors that prayer. It is the single most important prayer you could ever pray. We pray many prayers, but the most important one is to invite Jesus into your life. So if you pray that prayer, a number is going to come on your screen. 
And if you take some time and call that number, you'll meet one of our staff, one of our pastors, and we'll be able to begin to get to know you and invite you to be part of our church and disciple you in the ways of the Lord. If you've made that decision, you've, it's the best decision in your life. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Well, we come to the end of our service this morning, and I just want to speak a blessing over you. But before I do that, I still want to encourage you and charge you to be careful. I know you've had this a thousand times, but I really want to urge you to remain vigilant, remain careful, follow all the requirements that have been given by the government, sanitize, wear masks, because God wants you here so that you can continue preaching the gospel. We want you here. So take care of yourself in this season, even as things get hotter. In the name of Jesus, I decree that you are a great nation. I decree that your name is great. I decree today that you are blessed and you are a blessing. Blessed are those who bless you and cursed are those who curse you. All the people of the earth shall be blessed because of you. May the Lord God of your father Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, may he increase you a thousand times. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you as he has promised. And may he cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord turn towards you and bless you for you have the key to the house of David. What you open, no one can shut and what you shut, no one can open. Before you stands an open door, you are blessed as you come in, you are blessed as you go out. You are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the country. Listen, the work of your hands is blessed. The fruit of your womb is blessed. Your stores are blessed. You shall lend to many nations and borrow from none. I decree that your enemies are scattered seven different ways. Like Jesus, you are a king, you are a priest, you are a prophet and a builder. You are the top and not the bottom. You are the head and not the tail. You are the first and never, never the last. May you have a tremendous week this week, even as we go through this season. God is with us in it. Wasn't that an amazing service? Thank you so much for joining us today and I hope you have all been blessed. Don't forget to like, follow and subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube accounts. Up next is our Destiny Kids service, so keep watching. Have a blessed day and we'll see you next time.